possess a treasure far greater than gold. Was her gift passed down to me from heaven above? Twas the gift of my father's love, and my father's love is strong and true. As one of his own, and I don't see everything this world wants to give. For I live with my father's love, and my father's love is strong and true. Always. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. We're going to read the well known and greatly loved verse 16 in the third chapter of John in just a second. Let me say a couple of things and then we'll read together, all right? Good. Appreciate you coming back tonight. Good to see you here in the service. And thank you for the offering for the deaf camp. I really appreciate that. Uh, Mary and I have been in uh, Florida since the 3rd, I think. Is that right? 3rd of January. And we've been in 15, 16 different churches. Um, we have two, three more we're going to be in. And in all of these churches, we've taken offerings for campership. And none of the offerings have come to the team hasn't come to the Finneys or uh, to us. Um, our way is provided by the ranch or people uh, that have wanted to help, but all of the offerings that we take for campership, there really is what it goes to. It all goes straight to providing a week at camp for deaf young people. So that really is thrilling to me. We've done this now for several years and I'm thankful for it and I appreciate your having a part in it uh, for the pastor asking new people to give and very kind of you to, to, to do that. By the way, I did buy a Bitcoin last year. Unfortunately, a rat ate it and a hawk got sick. So that's, that's basically what happened in that Bitcoin. Other than that, I'm doing just really fine. Do you believe that story? It's not true. Okay, now let me tell you what I'd like to do. Most of us here tonight know the Lord, not all of us, but many of us, maybe most of us, know the Lord as Savior. And I'd like to go through the Gospel. You can't find a better place than John 3.16 and explain how you can know you're on your way to heaven and give you an opportunity tonight just to ask the Lord to be your Savior through Jesus Christ. So nobody's going to have his arm twisted. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm not going to ask anybody to make a speech. But if you don't know you're on your way to heaven, this will answer the question of how you can know it and you can get that settled before you walk out of this building. Okay? You got John chapter 3? Tell me what let's do. Let's stand together and we'll read verse 16. In John chapter 3. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You want to read it with me? I'll give the reference. And we'll all just read out together as best we can. If you don't have a Bible, try to look over somebody's shoulder. Okay, here we go. John 3.16.
For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, thank you for loving us and giving your Son, who died in our place to pay the penalty for our sin, that we might have eternal life. And I pray for those in this service who don't know the Lord Jesus, that they'll get that settled. And I pray for those of us who have trusted Christ to be clear in our presentation of the gospel. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. Now the Bible says, God so loved the world. Now that includes everybody here tonight. That includes a lot of people who are not here. But it also includes the truth that God loves you knowing you. Did you ever like somebody until you got to know them? <laughs> Whatever happened to you? Did you ever think somebody was really just great? This is a sharp guy. This is a great guy. This is a dear lady. Until you got to know them well. And then you decided, well, maybe, maybe you didn't like them that much after all. That ever happened to you? You ever have somebody that thought you were just the biscuits? They thought you were great until they got to know you and then maybe didn't think so much of you. But the wonderful truth with which John 3.16 begins is the truth that God loves you knowing you. Now, he doesn't love you because you're you. He loves you because he's God. And God loves you. And God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son. Now, I might learn to love you, and I might learn to love you a lot. And I might learn to love you enough that if it were necessary, I might be willing to give my life for you. I don't know that I'm brave enough to do that, but uh, assuming that I would be, I might be willing to give my life for you. I think I'd give my life for Mary, or for Will, my son, or for Wendy, or Wren, my daughters, I think I would. I don't know that I'm brave enough to do so, but I certainly love them enough to do so. I might learn to love you enough to give myself for you, but I have three children. Will's 46, Wendy's 42-ish, and Wren's 39. If you think for one second that I love you enough that I would be willing to give one of my children for you, you have another thing coming. Now the Bible doesn't just say that God so loved you that he was willing to give himself for you. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now John 1 12 says, But to as many as received him, that's Christ, those who believe in Jesus, to them that received him gave you the power to become the sons of God. So any person becomes God's child when he believes on Christ. But there's only one begotten. There's only one born of God. And that's Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. Now what does it mean to believe in Jesus? If, if I say, okay, I understand I'm a sinner, and I believe God gave Jesus Christ, and I want to believe in Jesus, what does it mean to believe in Jesus? Well, the word believe is the word faith. And so it means I would have faith or trust in Christ to do for me what I could not do for myself. Suppose I had to be in California tomorrow. I don't. Thank the Lord for that. That's wonderful. I don't, <laughs> don't have to be in California tomorrow. Hopefully, not any time in the near future. But suppose I had to be in California. I couldn't walk it. I couldn't drive it. Um, I couldn't run there. I couldn't ride a horse there. But I could fly, couldn't I? Okay, so if I went to the airport and got on the plane, I would understand I couldn't get me to California. But I would trust the plane to get me to California. And the wonderful thing is, if the plane makes it, I will. If the plane doesn't, I'm in trouble. But if the plane makes it to California, I will. Now, nobody here would think 
that I'm dumb enough to believe that I could get me to California. I can't. But I could trust another to do for me what I can't do for myself. That's just like, I can't get me to heaven. I can't get me into heaven. My works, my good intentions, my godliness, whatever I could muster up. I can't get me into heaven, but Christ can. Christ is God. And so, even though I'm a sinner, He paid the penalty of my sin. He died in my place, and He offers to me the gift of eternal life. So the Bible says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him. It means, it means to trust Him. It's like uh, you have a headache, and your wife, or your dad, or your mom, or your brother, or your sister says, you have a headache? Yeah. Well, take an aspirin. Suppose you say to me, Bill, you have a headache. I don't, but suppose I did. You say, you have a headache. Yes, I do. And you say, uh, well, Bill, take an aspirin. And I say to you, you know, I've always loved aspirin. All my life I believed in aspirin. Why, when I was a boy in the medicine cabinet of our home, we had aspirin. And I'll tell you one thing, nobody believes in aspirin more than I do. Would it help my headache? No. Not until I appropriate that belief. In other words, not until I say, I believe aspirin can take care of my headache and I will take it to do for me what I can't do for myself. Is this making sense? See, that's what I would do. Um, that's why the Bible says, you're a sinner, you can't save you, but you can believe on Christ to save you. You can trust Him to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. So God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him, now listen to this, should not perish. It's um, old English, it's proper, it just means won't perish. But what does the Bible mean when it says if you believe in Christ, even though you're a sinner, God loves you, He gave His Son, Christ died in your place, and if you'll believe in Him, you can have everlasting life. You won't perish. What does it mean to perish? In Luke 16, Jesus told the story of a rich man who died in his sins and went to a place called hell. There was in that same story, by the way, it's a true story, it actually happened. There was a poor man who died having trusted Christ, having believed in Christ, went to heaven. The Bible says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abram's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that I may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now, the place called hell, which at the end of time empties into the place called the lake of fire, that's what it means to perish. See, the very verse that talks about God's love to us illustrates or explains the truth that there's judgment for those who don't trust Christ. Look, I'm not trying to be dramatic. This is the simple truth. If you've never trusted Christ and you died tonight, you'd be in hell tonight. But you don't have to die tonight to go to hell. If you haven't trusted Christ, you could live for another 30 years and still die as you are now and go to hell. See, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life that's heaven. True story is told in the days of the Civil War of a young man who lay dying in a hospital ward. It was a field hospital. It was not a hospital of brick and mortar. It was a tent, probably. It was a field hospital, and he lay dying. I do not know the cause of his near death. 
state. Uh, it could have been sickness. Many men died. You know this in the Civil War because of sickness. Others died, of course, because of wounds. I tend to think he had been wounded, but I don't know why he was dying. But he, he knew he was dying. And there was a gruff old sergeant who ran the ward in which this young man was receiving help. And the young man, maybe in his early 20s, called out to the old sergeant. He said, Sergeant, Sergeant, I, I'm, I'm dying and I, I'm, I'm not ready to die. I'm going to face God and I, I'm not ready to face God. I, I need help. Let me ask you a question. If you were dying tonight, are you ready? If you knew that tonight at 10 o'clock, instead of being at home or at a restaurant or with friends, if you knew you'd be in the presence of God, are you ready to meet God? This man wasn't, and he knew he wasn't. And so he said, Sergeant, I've, I've got to have help. He said, I, I've just got to have help. I'm dying, and I, I'm not ready to die. Well, the sergeant said, you'll be okay. You'll be fine. You're going to pull through this. You'll be okay. And he left. A few minutes later, the sergeant came back. Sarge, the young man said, I've, I've, I've got to see a chaplain. I've got to get some help. I'm going to meet God tonight, and I am not ready to meet God. I'm going to die tonight, and I'm not ready to die. You, you'll be fine, said the sergeant, and the second time he left. When he came back, he knew the boy was near death, and he thought he would be dead when he returned, but he wasn't. Tenaciously, that young man was hanging on to life. He mustn't die. He couldn't die. He wasn't ready to die, and he knew he wasn't. And so he said to the sergeant, Sergeant, I... I gotta have I gotta have help. And the sergeant, who was anything but a believer, said to the young man, Well, let me learn you something that my mother taught me. I love this true story. And the old wicked sergeant began to quote John 3:16. He said, Now, son, you quote after me. And the boy said, Okay. And the old sergeant said, For God so loved the world. And the boy repeated, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. Should not perish, the boy said but have everlasting life. And again, should not perish, the boy said. Come on, come on. But have everlasting life. And the boy said, should not perish. Don't you see, Sarge? God has said He loves me and that if I would believe in His Son, I don't have to perish. I can be ready to meet God. And for the first time in His wicked, crusty old life, that old sergeant saw a truth that I would like for you to see tonight. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that sergeant, along with that boy, both trusted in Christ that night before the boy slipped out to meet the Lord Jesus and the sergeant lived to tell the story. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now let me ask you quite frankly, have you ever believed on Christ? Have there ever come a day in your life when you said, okay God, I know I'm a sinner, I know I don't deserve heaven, I know I can't get me to heaven, but I believe Jesus died in my place, and tonight or today, I am trusting, I am believing on, I am receiving Christ to be my Savior. Listen. If you've never done that, you can do that tonight. Where you sit in this service, you can get that settled. And you can walk out the back door of this church tonight with the assurance, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's bow for prayer, okay? Every head bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to ask you to sit up good and straight. It will be a help to you if you will.
And I'm going to ask the pastor to stand with me. And I'm not going to point anybody out. I'm not going to embarrass anybody at all. But I'd like to ask a couple of questions. And if you'd like, you can respond by simply raising a hand. Brother Frank will stand with us. Nobody else will be looking. <coughs> Let me ask this question. I wonder if you're here tonight and you would say, Bill, I cannot say I've ever believed on Christ. I cannot say I've ever received Christ. I cannot say I've ever come to God and said, God, you promised that you gave your Son and that if I would believe in Him, I would not perish but have everlasting life. Bill, you'd say, I've never done that, but I know I need to. And I want to. I want to ask the Lord Jesus to be my Savior. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I will pray for you, and more importantly, I'll ask you to pray for yourself right where you're sitting. So if you're here tonight and you'd say, Bill, I cannot say I know I'm saved, I know I've trusted in Christ, but I know I need to, and I want to. And you'd say, Bill, pray with me and for me. Would you slip a hand up right now where you're sitting until I see it, and then you can take it down. I can't say I know I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know that. I don't know that I'm God's child. I don't know that I'm saved from sin. But I'd like to be. And you'd say, Bill, pray with me and for me. <coughs> Just slip a hand up where you're sitting right this second. And I'll see it, and I'll pray for you, and I'll encourage you where you are to pray for yourself. Anybody like that at all? Anyone like that at all? How, how many here could say, Bill, I may not be everything I'd like to be, but I have trusted the Lord Jesus as Savior. I've trusted Christ, and if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. Would you slip a hand up where you're sitting? All right, God bless you. you can put your hands down. Now, have I missed you? Have you not prayed to trust the Lord Jesus? Anyone else? And you'd say, Preacher, I cannot say I've trusted Christ, but I want to right now. Pray with me and for me. Would you slip a hand up until I see it and put it down quickly and quietly? We'll wait just a moment. Anyone at all, we'll pray with you and for you. Anyone at all? All right, one more question. I wonder if you're here tonight and you'd say, Brother Bill, I wasn't expecting to hear the gospel tonight or about how to be saved tonight. But having heard it, I'm reminded of its simplicity, of its straightforwardness. And it reminds me of the important truth that I need to be telling other people. You know, one of the reasons you need to be saved is because there are people that love you and look to you who also need to be saved. And they probably never will be unless you get this matter settled. If you have trusted Christ and you are saved, I wonder if you're here and you'd say, Now, Brother Rice... Um, I'm saved, but I, I need to be more fervent. I need to be more consistent. I, I need to be more determined in telling other people about the Lord Jesus. And I want to ask God to make me that person I should be as a witness tonight. Would you slip a hand up where you're seated? Yes, God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. You can put your hands down. All right. Anyone else at all? Anyone else at all? Okay, you want to look this way? Want to look right this way? Thanks for being here tonight. It's great to have you, and thanks for listening so well. I appreciate that. Let's do two things. I'm going to pray, but as I pray, you don't need to listen to my prayer. Pastor will come and dismiss the service in a moment. But I'm going to ask the Lord to help us to be clear and consistent about the gospel, telling people how they can know they're going to heaven. And if God spoke in your heart, I think there were five or six who raised a hand, maybe even more than that, and said, I want to be consistent as a witness. Listen, you can be, and you should be. Ask God for help tonight. Right where you're sitting, ask God for help tonight. All right? Let's bow for prayer. Father, you've seen hearts. I've seen these hands. And I think of this man and this lady and this gentleman and this youngster and then others who raised a hand saying, I, I need to let people know uh, about the Lord Jesus. 
Now God loves us and Christ died for us and that if we believe in Him we could have eternal or everlasting life. There are not people in this room, dear Father, to impact a great number of people in Fort Lauderdale if all of us would just be consistent every week in taking an opportunity to show people how they can know their sins are forgiven and how they can know that they're on their way to heaven. So I pray that you'll help with this and for those who've asked for prayer, we've asked on their behalf and I know they're asking as well. And we know, Father, you'll answer these prayers. We pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Pastor. That's the greatest message ever preached. Isn't it? It's been preached many times by a lot of different people. But it's the truth. And nothing will impact a life like that message. Nothing will change anything. That's the gospel. We need to preach it. We're going to give you opportunities to be part of this church's gospel preaching ministry this year. One of those opportunities is a weekly scheduled soul winning Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. And I'd encourage you to come. Come participate. Pray for those that preach the gospel as well. Amen. Tomorrow, a number of us will be in the school, or a couple of us will be in the school at the First Priority Club. And this is a very timely opportunity yes. to preach the gospel right now. So you pray for, pray for the teenagers in our church who are going into the public schools right now. I don't think there is a more prime opportunity to talk about eternal matters and to deal with the hard issues that are going on with people than right now. Matter of fact, has there ever been a better time to preach the gospel than the time we live in right now? Right. I don't think so. This is opportunity, and this is what we need. So thank you, Dr. Bill, for preaching a message and reminding us that the gospel is John 3.16. It's not anywhere written better than that. And so uh, thank you for preaching that. Also, thank you for being with us and being Amen. so gracious. It took years of begging and pleading to get Dr. Bill to finally come to our church. He used to send people. He'd say, well, I'll send, and he'd send somebody. But he finally came. And then he came back. I couldn't believe it. And so, anyway, all kidding aside, we love having you. And uh, we hope that you'll just move here someday and be part of this church. And along with the Finneys, who are going to probably live in Miami Beach, unfortunately. But you'll see. So, anyway, uh, let's dismiss with a word of prayer. Make sure you get the chance to meet uh, Dr. Bill and Miss Mary and Frank and Lindsay and... and uh, Alyssa and Ethan and Juliana and Elijah. Make sure you get a chance to meet each of those. Good. And then ask Dr. Bill, how in the world can a guy still be preaching the gospel for more than, well, let's see, the ranch is more than 65 years old, but he was pre-existent right. before the ranch. About 100 years. So, about, I mean, about 100 <laughs> years old. How can you do that? All kidding aside, one of the reasons I love the ministry of the Rice family is because of the heritage of, of faithfulness to just simply be what God wants you to be and not change. And we love that about you. Appreciate you guys. Get Take advantage of the opportunity to, to uh, meet them and thank them for the blessing they've been for you today. Let's dismiss with prayer. Father, thank you for the day that we've had and we ask that you would help us to be effective in applying the things we've learned. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>